Hi, I'm James from Chaosium. When I sat down with John Wick, we talked about world building. And specifically, we talked about how John's world building for 7C has developed over the years. I'm going to jump across to an interview in a moment, which starts just after I asked him what's changed from when he first started to world build for Thea to now. But before we jump across to that, please subscribe to the Chaosium YouTube channel. It helps us a lot, and it lets us make more content like this. Enjoy. Well, a lot of it has to do with when we when we first made the Thea, it was a very collaborative project. Uh, there are a lot of different authors working on it, and I think that that kind of shows in the original in the original version. Uh, the uh, the 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 different nations are very are are very different and have different voices and and all of that. And when we tackled second edition. Uh, I wanted to make it a little bit more cohesive and I wanted the tone to be a little bit more uh, to be a little bit more consistent. And also, uh, I learned a lot more <laughs> about European history when uh, when uh, we, we started working on seventh, second edition. And I wanted to make, uh, frankly, I wanted to make the game a little less white. Uh, when when Jennifer and I first pitched 7C to AEG, Back in 1998, uh, it was a game about feminism. It that and it was kind of like under the under the under the carpet, under the rose, as it were. Uh, but really, the game was was really about feminism. And then when we uh, when we we relaunched the game, we wanted to keep that, but also bring a level of inclusivity into the game that was even greater. And uh, uh, for example, one of the one of the things we did was the original art director asked me, uh, "Can we have a picture of of two of two men kissing in the book?" And I said, "Only if we can have a picture of two women kissing and a picture of a man and a woman kissing, because everybody gets to kiss in my book." <laughs> and uh, and and that was and I. I, I, I was prepared for it because a couple of people were like, what is this doing here? This doesn't belong in this book. And I said, are you asking me if this is a kissing book? Because, and, uh, and uh, some people get it, but some people haven't seen uh, the greatest movie ever made, which is the princess bride. Uh, well, sometimes it's the princess bride, but most of the time it's big trouble, little China. Uh, but uh, yeah, I wanted the book to feel uh, like everybody can be a hero. And that meant that everybody had to be represented in the book because everybody can be a hero. And that's really what, what the, the, the coalescing theme of second edition is. Right. Well, that's fantastic. Are you, you're talking about collaborators and how some of them have influenced the uh, setting in a big way. Can, are there any uh, collaborators that you think that you can uh, put to mind immediately that contributed in a way that sort of uh, you, you didn't expect? Somebody who you maybe hired for a specific book or a specific task, and then they ended up bringing something that steered the whole setting in a new direction. So, yeah, I mean, one of the things, one of the coolest things about uh, uh, Second Edition uh, 7C is the Adebayan Trading Company, which turns out to be this huge villain. Uh, it's a multinational corporation that's based on another trading company from the uh, from our own past. And uh, uh, James Mendez Hodes uh, came up with the Adebayan Trading Company, and it was something that I did not expect to be so cool. And it really is a great villain. And uh, that was one of the things that really caught me off guard was that. Fantastic. Talking about villains in general, you've talked about the heroic aura and how the story of heroes have guided the creation of new content in the world. What have, what has the stories of villains helped you shape? Um, uh, do you want to talk about how villains have had the same effect? Yeah, I, it's, it's funny because I think that villains are actually really easy to do. And it's something I think that I'll, like even the Marvel movies and certainly the DC movies have completely fallen down on. Uh, Doctor Doom is the greatest villain in all of literature. And I'm counting novels, movies, every everything. Uh, here he is. Here's Victor. He's right there. Oh, very cool. <laughs> Doctor Doom is the greatest villain in all of literature because as evil as Doctor Doom is, as maniacal and world you know, grabbing as Dr. Doom is. The fact of the matter is, is that everything that he does is to get his mother's soul out of hell. How do you beat that? Right? Noble, because, yeah. 
when you find out that Dr. Doom's motive is to rescue his mother's soul. Okay, I understand why Dr. Doom is doing the things. I may disagree with the things that he's doing, but I get it. Magneto is a fantastic villain because his motive is so sympathetic. Um, the greatest Marvel villains, the greatest superhero villains are the villains who have motives that we can sympathize with. And it's one of the things that, that uh, the, the old cliche that nobody thinks they're a villain. Everybody is the hero in their own story. Uh, and I really love that idea because it, it makes such compelling villains. And when you have villains that who have those kinds of motivations, they become completely three, they, they become three dimensional. They become, uh, something beyond, uh, mm -hmm, I'm going to blow up the world. Well, why are you going to, you're on it. Why are you going to blow up the world? You're on it. That doesn't, no, that doesn't make sense. So, um, and it's, you know, it's, and that is what makes villains great. And if Marvel can figure that out for Dr. Doom for the Fantastic Four movie, yay! I just hope they figure it out before then. <laughs>